All right, everyone. Well, welcome to our healthy um, Valentine's themed cooking class. And uh, sorry, just get a couple things going here real quick. I am super excited uh, to host this class. As all of you know, I love I love healthy cooking. Um, and of course, making food sexy is always one of my trademark things. So of course, when it came to Valentine's, like it made a lot of sense to do an aphrodisiacs cooking class. So especially you guys, I hope you're paying attention out there. Um, we're gonna do some work here to increase your opportunities um, in the healthy cooking arena. So um, we have some fun things to follow along with uh, at home, some great documents and tools that if you know, you're not sitting here with us, you don't have the sheets with us, we're gonna post those on our Facebook page. But all right, let's start here. So as always, you know, the, the real recipe for success in all of our nutrition um, comes to basic math. And um, as my screen freezes up there for a moment. So, of course, 20% uh, fitness, 80% nutrition, but 100% mindset, and zero excuses. And that's what this is all about. This class is about zero excuses, about knowing what you can do and how you can make it awesome. So that all equals awesome results, of course. Uh, lots of incredible people getting incredible results. Um, especially through our I Commit to Me Challenge and everything we have going on there. And so, um, sorry, it keeps popping off our screen over here. Um, hmm. There we go. Let's see if this works for us over on this side here. So anyway, um, like I said, lots of different awesome results uh, that we have continuously going with all of our people. And oh, here we go again. Um, all ages, you know, athletes, non-athletes, moms, uh, dads. It's just awesome to see all the great results coming. Uh, here's my wife and I, of course. Um, our results have been amazing. We've been very blessed. Um, down from a size 12 to a size 4 for her. And um, now I'm 30 pounds down. So it's been wonders. And all of it came down to the simplicity and the ease of our program. Of course, doing our two shakes a day uh, when we're on a weight loss program. And um, sometimes even more than that when life's busy, we all know how it gets. That's awesome. But we're going to talk about also what do we eat in between that. And then again, specifically in this one, we are talking about aphrodisiacs. So some people had asked me, hey, what is an aphrodisiac? And uh, well, this is what Webster says. It is a food, drink, or drug that stimulates sexual desire. So that is what an aphrodisiac is. So we are excited to. Uh, you know, to share with you some aphrodisiacs, some fun, delicious, clean things as well. Um, okay, so around Valentine's, right, we're always talking about love and more love and more kisses and hugs. So again, my whole goal is to increase those odds. So the first aphrodisiac I'm going to talk to you about is something that you see a lot. Um, it's commonly and widely available to you. And avocado. Avocado is our first one. And avocados are awesome. They're super important. This is heart health fun. So really important for your heart health. And um, avocados can be used in so many ways. Often we think of it in um, the Mexican realm and other things of that nature. But, uh, you know, avocados can be used in savory things. It can be used with desserts. I mean, used all over the place. So here's a couple of my favorite applications. Number one here, um, grilling avocados. So there is something super magical about heating up avocado and the way that the fat melts um, when you get it hot on the grill. And it's just so simple and beautiful, but afterward, you just do a little salt and pepper, grill it. You need to have the grill nicely greased so you can take a little bit of olive oil like on a towel and just real quickly rub it. So that way it doesn't stick because it'll, the flesh will tend to stick. And you wanna make sure that the avocado isn't too soft. And bam, it's amazing, like the richness, it's unbelievable. Just a great, simple appetizer. You can throw some microgreens in, yes? You don't have a grill, can you grill? You totally could, yep, oven? yeah. Easy. Yeah, just, you know, get it on that top rack on the broiler. Um, so for those of you who can't hear, she was asking about if you could broil it. Um, if, uh, you know, if you don't have a grill, and yes, for sure. And then um, I love taking avocado and stuffing it. Um, so this is a little bit of crab. You can take um, some crab meat, and they sell it in all different forms. You know, you can go with a jumbo lump, which, of course, is a little more costly. Um, you can do uh, different you know, back fan, whatever it is that makes sense. And 
just a simple little, uh, you know, this has a little mayonnaise in it, a little mustard, salt and pepper, some onions, some parsley, and boom, put it inside that avocado, stuffed avocado. Awesome. Okay, strawberries. We all know strawberries are another one of those aphrodisiacs, right? We see people since Roman times feeding them to people, and they're associated with love. Chocolate dipped strawberries, right? See, so strawberries are, are an awesome aphrodisiac. They're so tasty. You like strawberries? Yeah, me too. So there's so many fun ways we can use strawberries. Um, one of my favorites is actually doing it, and fish is an aphrodisiac, so I'm jumping ahead here real quick, but uh, fish is also an aphrodisiac. So salmon is the uh, supposedly the most, you know, promoting of uh, those feelings, but um, aphrodisiac. So here's one of my favorite things, taking strawberries and implementing them in a salad oh is like God, so simple. Well, this, do you want to eat it too? Yeah. So this was really easy. This is um, pan-seared salmon. We did this um, with some spinach, with a very light uh, dressing, um, and strawberries. And then we took a balsamic reduction. Now, one of the things you're gonna have on the sheet here um, is directions on how to do a balsamic reduction. And for those of you who don't have the sheets, I'll put them on our Fit180 page. But it's super cool because, why does it keep doing that? Sorry, I keep having technical difficulties on our side over here. Who wants not to? Why do you want to reduce balsamic reduction? So you, it turns into a sweet, delicious syrup when you reduce it. So um, it, it's awesome. And you don't have to have the most expensive balsamic when you do that. Um, what happens is it turns, you, when you reduce it by about three quarters, it becomes, oh, or all the way back to the beginning, awesome. It becomes a, uh, just a really thick, sweet syrup that can be drizzled over all kinds of things. Yep. I never knew that. Yeah, it's not as assertive and aggressive. And it's great because it's low calorie. You know, there's not a lot of calories in balsamic vinegar. We love making our own dressings. So like this was olive oil, a little balsamic vinegar, and a little mustard just to make the dressing. But here you notice we incorporated avocado too. Funny, this is just an aphrodisiac filled plate. And pomegranates, which are also an aphrodisiac. So we took the salmon, just a little olive oil, salt and pepper, some herbs, and just pan seared it real quick. And then did the salad and drizzled balsamic at the end. And that was it. So here's another rendition of that same kind of salad. So strawberries, avocado, arugula. Arugula is spicy, so with like the sweetness of strawberries. Spicy and sweet are beautiful together. So it's something that we always love pairing um, the yin and the yang of things, you know. That uh, looks great for summer. Yeah, here it is. It is a cold salad. And there's a little cucumber in there too. And this is one that's actually on your recipe here. And so here, uh, here you go. So this is cool because it has a lot of aphrodisiacs. So on this aphrodisiac sheet right here, you'll notice out of all the things we have on here, we have avocado in this one, we have honey in this one, um, we have strawberries in this, and then you can easily sprinkle it with a little bit of nuts to bump it over the top. Uh, but those are some, and a little olive oil, some of the aphrodisiacs. So you could take it and again, put it with salmon on the side with that same balsamic reduction. And seriously, that's salmon, olive oil, salt, and pepper. That's it. That's what it looks like. Yeah, when you, like when you, the, that like one. Syrupy? That one, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. I need to eat with y'all, right? Okay? Like, seriously. <laughs> So, so this is um, a drink idea with some aphrodisiacs. So, of course, Herbalife Mango Aloe this stuff is awesome. Everyone loves Herbalife Mango Aloe. So, um, this is a beverage where you take sparkling water, you take those strawberries, and if you just beat up some of them um, in, in some of the aloe and then add your soda water with a little mint, you have a really refreshing, non-alcoholic, awesome beverage. So. I love aloe with sparkling water in general, but that's just a fun way to take an aphrodisiac and kick it up a notch. Aloe, strawberries, mint? Yeah, so mint, yep, yeah, mint, just the strawberries, aloe. Um, you could take a little mango, because it's in season right now too, since it's mango aloe. Put some ice in it, rinse it up, and you got it smooth. There you go. Heck yeah. I want some. 
You want some too? Awesome. So, um, okay. Aphrodisiac. Hold on. Here we go. Oh, really? Okay. No, this, this is right. So pomegranates are an aphrodisiac. And who's ever, have you guys ever done your own pomegranate? Right? It's so easy. Right? What do you do? You just bite into it. And <laughs> okay. I bite into it, spit out the seeds. Sometimes I chew it with all the seeds in it and spoil. It tastes amazing no matter what. Yeah. Pomegranates are awesome. He'll even eat it because it's only six. Really? That's good. You're going to be healthy. So pomegranates are heart health. Heart health month. We're talking about um, heart health on, on as many things as we can. That fish oil is another one. Um, but pomegranates are so great. You just cut it down the middle and you just tap out the back of it with a spoon and all the seeds will fall out. Okay, and you get, that's all the goodness. That's the stuff you want. So it really makes it easy. And this is an appetizer I stole from my daughter. So she taught me this one. Yes, Lauren learned this in school. So you take some pear, some pomegranate, red onion, cilantro, and then squeeze some lime juice, and boom, put them in the little chip cups. And this is what it looked like. That's what it looked like. That's her plate, her oh, photo. Wow. Yeah, right? That is such a beautiful Isn't that awesome? And it's so easy. Like. Super easy. I could also see even doing something like maybe a little goat cheese in there if you wanted to add a little cheese. That would be a great appetizer for a party. Oh, so easy, right? Inexpensive, healthy, clean, and it'll it'll hold up nicely. So, yeah, she she killed it. Yeah. That, that's pomegranate, onion, cilantro, a little bit of lime. Uh -huh. and, and some pear. And, oh, pear. Mm -hmm. huh. So, see, Omar, you can do this, buddy. <laughs> and then invite all, all of us to his house to eat it, right? Right? So, figs. Okay, figs are amazing. And I don't know if everyone's had fresh figs, but they're unbelievable. And they're beautiful. They're just such a great, colorful thing, perfect on Valentine's Day. Figs have a lot of applications to them. Um, but here's just one example. So, here we are. We're using as many of the same things as we can. When you make balsamic reduction, you want to be able to use it, right? And it has a lot of applications. So here with the figs, we're going to get some prosciutto, a little blue cheese, and microgreens. And this is something that you'll notice more and more at the stores in the produce area, these clamshells of microgreens, and they make the most beautiful garnish. They're like three, you know, two, two to four dollars, but they're worth where it. Where do you find the microgreens? I've seen them at King Super's Sprouts everywhere in the, uh, where you find alfalfa sprouts and other stuff right there. Uh -huh. Like and the, herbs. the fresh herbs. Uh -huh. Yeah, they have a little like clamshells of microgreens. And there's all kinds. Shell? Clamshell is just a little plastic clamshell, sorry. Oh, okay. I was like, yeah, kind of like raspberries come in those. They come with microgreens. Okay. Yep, exactly. Okay. And oh, yeah, you can get arugula, which is nice and spicy. You can get all kinds of fun. Um, Mizuna, other great things that are just perfect to garnish with peas. It's awesome. So here's an example of that. So just taking the prosciutto, wrapping it around the fig. Again, something that can be done ahead of time. You don't want to do it too far in advance because the prosciutto dries out. But a little blue cheese crumbles and then boom, balsamic reduction. Done. Simple, easy. The prosciutto is not inexpensive, so just be ready that when you buy prosciutto, you want to get good stuff. Um, it costs a little bit, but a little bit goes a long way. Can you use dry fix? It's not going to be quite the same. You totally could, and it will have the aphrodisiac properties that we're going for. But it just doesn't have the same tooth. It doesn't have the same vibrance that that does to cut through the fat of the prosciutto and the richness fresh yeah i mean for sure and the fresh figs in the produce area often are in near those greens and other stuff and just ask the produce guys but they're good okay, awesome. and then here's another fig option so figs can be used as desserts um here's figs with again balsamic reduction and a little bit of uh vanilla ice cream so you could use a vanilla greek yogurt Ice cream. ice cream just simple bright beautiful and how easy is that like it's not a lot of work super awesome mm -hmm. and there's a lot of different balsamic vinegars there's um, ones that are flavored with pomegranate there's ones that are flavored with strawberry with other things so I like the fact that with balsamic vinegar it has a lot of versatility to it so it looks like chocolate syrup like yeah it, it, looks, it looks very dark when you do it for sure all right, chai tea. 
So that was one of the cool ones. And I'm like, all right, of the aphrodisiacs, chai tea. I'm like, no wonder, no wonder I, I love the Herbalife chai tea so much. So also, and I think it's even more funny, spice up your day with chai tea, given that it's an aphrodisiac uh, class. I thought that to be very appropriate. And I didn't even write that. But um, who likes chai tea lattes and stuff? Right? I love them. I love them. But they're filled with crazy calories, like super unhealthy. Here's our version. Herbalife chai tea, which boosts our metabolism, which is awesome. And then mix it with the protein drink mix. And you have tons of protein, metabolism booster, creamy, energy, delicious, all energy, all of it. So, <laughs> right? right? Yeah, tons of energy. Right? So you can make yourself a sexy little cup of chai tea. Awesome. Okay. Dark chocolate. Dark chocolate is an aphrodisiac and cocoa. How much percent of cocoa? cocoa. Uh, how much percent of the cacao? The more, the better in terms of the aphrodisiac properties. Uh -huh. um, like 70. 70 plus. Mm -hmm. And so uh, here is chocolate in a savory way using the cacao on a, this is a pork chop. So this is one of the recipes on there. And um, so what we have here is a cocoa and spice rubbed um, pork chop. And so again, like the chocolatey, the spicy, um, just super delicious. And this one, um, this one could be done, you know, a lot of people eat different ways. Some people don't eat pork. It could be done with chicken, could be done with anything. Um, but, you know, I really, I love um, the concept of this. You brine it first, because brining pork is awesome, so you do it in salt and water. It says right here how to do it, but you soak it in that salt and water, and that really imparts a lot of that flavor through, and then you rub it and grill it, and awesome, awesome, awesome. So serving that with asparagus, which is also an aphrodisiac. So asparagus, almonds, another aphrodisiac. And then I'm going to show you later how to utilize this, but you could do like an avocado puree, again, aphrodisiac. You could lay it on the plate, so that spiciness with the, with the creaminess of the avocado would be awesome. Um, and then I would I would garnish it just for fun with a big bright cherry or a big bright um, not cherry pepper but uh, big bright red chili in the middle, just because it would just make it pop. Like it would speak to the ingredients on the plate. Um, and you know, red chilies are always associated with something hot and spicy, so. <laughs> It does look like Spanish. Good art. Yeah, it is. Very Spanish-influenced. Yeah. So, yeah, this, one, this one's going to be a fun one to, to play with. And, you know, really affordable. So, of course, chocolate can be done a lot of other ways. But this is one of the most interesting to me. So, I was in the restaurant business, as many of you know, for 15 years. And worked with some amazing chefs. One in particular was a pastry chef that I worked with, with named Ryan. And Ryan um, would make awesome stuff. And he came to us and said, hey, because we did an aphrodisiacs menu for Valentine's. And he's like, oh, well, we're going to do this avocado chocolate mousse. And I'm like, that does not sound good, you know. And he's like, no, no, man, it's going to be amazing. So I have to say, it was surprisingly amazing, um, this avocado chocolate mousse. So this is one of the recipes on there. So you pair – Two different aphrodisiacs together. You could even garnish it with a strawberry, of course, instead of a raspberry. But um, man, avocado chocolate mousse is unbelievable. Like, it just has this creaminess and richness that's just, man, it's special. And it's so simple, simple to make. So you'll notice in here another aphrodisiac in the recipe, vanilla, which is an aphrodisiac. So that's one of the um, ingredients in here. Almond milk, hmm, a nut, right? Perfect. And so it's just fun, fun way to to change up the whole chocolate that and amazing. dessert concept. I would have never in a billion years thought of that. Oh, I wouldn't either. I, I was betting against it. He's like, and you gotta it, try it. Oh. It, it's, it, it sounds amazing too because it's, it's obviously not something you eat all the time or in a big portion, mm. but it's pretty, like the ingredients are really healthy. Heck yeah. So, and then so instead of doing, dough, like making a, yeah like a cupcake type thing, mm -hmm. like a cake, like you're getting rid of all the excess crap and using healthy food. Heck yeah. yeah. No, and the avocado, I would never, I would never in a billion years suspect that avocado. I know, and then you're going to use four avocados to a half cup of chocolate. Like, it's crazy. That's awesome. So, all right. Another chocolate form, of course, rebuild strength. You know, good versus bad. 
I love doing it hot. Um, and then of course I added a little extra calories because I do a little whipped cream on top. Kind of important. And it you says know. whipped cream is a aphrodisiac. How in the world? <laughs> There's a lot of ways, but uh, whipped cream is an aphrodisiac. <laughs> I don't know what I mean is how is whipped cream is aphrodisiac. I've never heard of that one. So here uh, well, okay. no, this is gonna be awesome. So I got yeah, I'll be like, okay. how to use whipped cream. I got it. So, um, oh, sorry. I don't know how that slide got in there. Um, <clears throat> just use your imagination. There's plenty of ways to use whipped cream. And uh, I thought it was like the actual, like, not the way you use it. I thought it was like the, the sugar and the cream, the not, ingredients. Oh, yeah, no, I think it's more of how you use it, but yeah. I, I could be wrong. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> But lots of fun ways, and again, back to the rebuild on top, the best way to use it. That's clean, PG. Okay, so this next part, I want to teach you um, some fun plating ideas and plating tips. So there's so many great things. You know, we all know oysters on this list. We all know cherries. You know, we know some of these things that were on here, like I said, salmon. Um, and there are some fun ways of using these aphrodisiacs in your everyday cooking, but especially on Valentine's. But what I wanted to teach uh, a little bit this time was a lot of people ask me about plating. And they asked me about how I make the food look so good. So I wanted to use some step-by-step, -step, very applicable um, techniques to show you on how to plate um, sexier food. So first one, what is that? Canvas. It's a canvas. What do you Painting. use a canvas for? Painting. Painting. To paint, that's right. So you have to have a canvas to paint on, right? And it's important to consider that when we're plating. You paint food. You could paint food on the canvas, right? Smart. So when it comes to cooking, our canvas is this. What are those? Plates. Our plates. plates. That's our canvas. And it's important to have a, a good canvas. So one of the things about plates that is important to me is a lot of surface area to plate on. Um, and I like different shapes. But all the plates we have, we bought it predominantly um, at uh, uh, Ikea. Target. Target and Ikea. So we bought thick, thick, not expensive white plates that I also I can put in the oven and heat up so that the plates stay warm while we're eating. Um, but investing in a decent plate is really important because you're going to use it over and over. So here's how to build a plate. Number one is to consider colors. Okay, what does that look like? Cheese. Just born, uh, a lot of yellow. Uh, right? Monochromatic. And <laughs> Does that have pine nuts in it? It has all kinds what of is earth tones. <laughs> but this is how a lot of people do their food, right? It's all like the same color. I don't care what color it is. If it's all the same, nothing pops. Well, you're supposed to eat your rainbow every day, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Health-wise, eating the rainbow of colors is huge. So not only is it healthy, but it looks awesome. I mean, look at the difference in a plate that has all these colors, all these things. And this plate is simple. Like, there's some dots around the outside. There's some pieces of chive around the outside. Um, there's some grape tomatoes, some shrimp, a piece of frisee, two green onions, and a little red sauce underneath. Like, you could do this. You could do that. Some orchid leaves to even add a little more color. But you could totally do that any day. Okay, so this is the first thing I do. I take sauce and I put it on the plate and instead of mixing the sauce in with everything like people tend to do like let's say for example with a uh, spaghetti people tend to take take it mix it up with all their stuff and now it's just one red block that you put on the plate I love to take the marinara put it on the plate and then I'll take the plate and I make sounds and like that and I go around till it spreads out on the plate so now that's like my base and I can throw contrasting colors on top Here's an example of that with the spaghetti squash. So I took the marinara, did it on the plate, and then I went, you know, like did a little dance. And then I put the spaghetti squash on top. I should have wiped my plate. Rough. Um, and then I put the chicken on top of that again because it layered, the colors layered. Um, it made sense. And I took a little green, and that was spinach because I didn't have any basil. I would have used basil if I had it, but just rolled it up. When you take leaves and you stack them and roll them up, you can slice them and make what's called a chiffonade, which is a ribbon cut. So you just roll up those leaves and just long slices and it'll make nice long ribbons like that. And I just took it and sprinkled it over the top. So that's seriously marinara, spaghetti squash, you know, that I season with salt and pepper and roasted and then grilled chicken and spinach. That's it. 
but it looks awesome. I mean, how much better is that going to taste than something that's all mumbled and, you know, muddled and put together and just plopped on a plate? Like, that gets me excited to eat it, you know? So, okay, here's another example of simple but clean presentation. So here we are with the balsamic reduction again. Um, figs, of course, again, um, aphrodisiac. And uh, we have a little bit of a um, grilled something in the middle. I don't know what it is. I think it's tomato. But, is that like a salmon patch? No, I think, it's, I think it's a yellow tomato. In the middle? Um, <laughs> but what? It's, too, it's too round on the edges. I don't know. I pulled this one off of the internet. But arugula, just simple. Like Things don't have to be crazy. You don't need 8 million ingredients. Good quality ingredients simply done are the best way to eat and the most flavorful. And you see how doing that around the outside, that, that those dots made for a much prettier plate um, than just doing it, you know, right over the top. Here's another use of the balsamic. This is some grilled peaches, which grilling peaches, once those come into season, are amazing. Amazing. Um, do you? Me too. And see, there's our prosciutto again, but just some more ideas with, with simple plating. Okay. This is one of my favorite techniques, the sexy spoon swipe. This is an important one. So you'll notice this a lot at, at nice restaurants, this technique. What you first do is you take a spoon of whatever your sauce is. So this could be any sauce. And you can start practicing it just with anything. You put a nice spoonful on the plate, and then you put the tip of the spoon in the edge of it, and then drag it across. Oh, okay, I've seen that a billion times. Yep. Yeah, you see it all the time at restaurants, and then you would plate things like maybe right here next to it, but it, it's very attractive. I like to do it in a greater, a longer fashion, so it goes across plate. You can do it at an angle. You can do all kinds of fun stuff with it, but just the technique of dragging the spoon through that. So this, imagine this could be hummus, this could be anything on the plate. Like you can make it so much more fun than just what it normally is. So you taking chocolate sauce that, and strawberries, and then you have to right. There you go. I like the movie. Oh, do you like Star Wars? Really yep. I, I, and that, that's what comes to mind when I think of stuff. <laughs> yeah. So um, this is another example of contrasting colors. So here it's super, super simple. Um, an herb puree with a piece of pan seared white fish on top, a little herbs on it, and then some pieces of radish. So you notice on this, they put the sauce in the middle and then swirled it outwardly with the spoon. You know, just to make a nice presentation. Again, the canvas is the plate a few radishes that pop, like it's beautiful, clean, simple plating. So with, with plating, the thing is to think outside the box. And we all have the same ingredients. It's just how do we present it that makes it so much more special. Oftentimes it's not just the ingredients themselves. So here's an example. Um, I was wanting to do ratatouille. So I was like, how can I make ratatouille fun? You know, and, and something different, because ratatouille isn't the sexiest thing in the world. So here, um, I also wanted to fillet with it, but I took all the vegetables and cut them the same size. So I have tomatoes, I have eggplant, I have onion, I have zucchini and squash, and I just sliced them in layers. I also added some peppers to it, but I sliced them in layers and just stacked after I cooked them. Like, it wasn't, wasn't crazy, it's just getting creative with it. And then I took the sauce, which was um, a demi-glaze, and... You know, often people don't have demi glazes, but you could take a, a beef stock or something and reduce it um, and get a nice, rich sauce and just drizzled it around the outside. How long did that dish take you? Not long at all, because I, I sliced all these veggies, I threw them in a pan, sauteed them real quick, and then just stacked them up. I've only seen the movie. Do you remember them? Yeah. yeah, when he takes forever. Uh -huh. So I took elements of ratatouille and made it, but it was simple, super simple. Yeah. And I actually saw a video where they actually made it like one in um, pretty much it's the same process like what you did, except you know they baked it, which you know took a long process. Yeah. So just having fun, you know, thinking outside the box. So here are the ingredients are quinoa, um, asparagus, tomatoes, and um, that's a beautiful piece of red snapper that I had uh, that a friend of ours who's in the fish business gave us and. So br Brussels sprout uh, salad on top. So what I did with this is I just was creative on how I plated it. You know, again, not a lot of ingredients, quinoa, tomatoes, asparagus, the Brussels sprouts that I just cut into ribbons. And again, 
brown them, and then the fish. And so this just makes it look so much better when you think of like, how do I make the same ingredients look good? Instead of just plopping them on the plate, like we do that. And then underneath the sauce, there is, um, that was a butternut squash soup. So I think one of the coolest things is taking um, ingredients that don't take a lot of time and considering how could that be your sauce? Like that Pacific organic soups that come in those rectangular things, boxes, thank you, sweetie. <laughs> you take them and just reduce them. You know, if you reduce those, you have a beautiful sauce, lots of flavor options. There's red pepper, there's all sorts of good things. And they make, again, a great, a great base sauce. So it was so simple to make that pretty. So next time you have asparagus, think of like, how can you plate it in such a way that it makes it more fun? Um, how can the colors contrast each other on the plate? Uh, and you'll have a lot of fun. I know we talked about this dish last time, um, but it's just one of the easiest. And again, it was, it was plating that made this so awesome. It wasn't just the dish. It was like, how did I plate it? And, you know, that was persimmon, some arugula, um, and some tuna, but I could have just put a block of tuna on there. I could have had a salad on there, and it would have been, an, you know, an everyday plate, but, like, slicing it up, fanning it out on my long so rectangular you plates. Like that all the time at home, like, for yourself? Like, make those we cook like that often. Like, for yourself, like, not even for dinner, dads? Or for yeah, no, I for us. Because if you're going to eat it, why not have it be awesome? I'm like, this doesn't take, okay, doesn't take any more life. work. <laughs> it doesn't take any more work. Like, you can make it like this, too. I'm, I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm just kidding. I can learn to cook that. Yeah. Well, this is, I mean, again, it's a salad. It's tuna, and it's a little fruit. So you could take that with anything and do the same thing. So. What's the fruit that you use? That's persimmon. persimmon. It's, it's in season um, in the late Ball. So, so you find it at um, King Supers or like Sprouts? You can get anywhere. King Super Sprouts, all the places. They just don't, it's not in season right now. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty much done, but it's, I think it's a late fall fruit. But there's always fun things to play with. Like, yeah. I mean, that could be tomatoes. It could be all sorts of stuff. You could do the same concept with anything. Instead of chopping up your tomatoes and throwing them in a salad, you could lay them across a plate or do them in a circle. Put your salad in the middle. Like, just have fun with it. Um, and then the balsamic. You know, I know we talked about this zucchini um, pizzas the other day, but they're just, the, the balsamic and the way that this is layered makes it look so much better. Is that zucchini on the bottom? It is zucchini, yep. And then tomatoes and buffalo mozzarella. And um, it's just simple, simple. And then the drizzle of balsamic is what makes it super, super awesome to me. Um, okay, so th this is, to me, again, it's, it's not what you have. It's what you do with what you got that makes it awesome. I mean, there's so many times that we've had really not a lot of ingredients lying around the house, not a lot of, you know, crazy things, but you just get creative with it. Like, how can you turn something that's seemingly lame into something awesome and exciting? And um, to me, it's just really going all the way back to your palette, your canvas, contrasting colors, you know, and... Starting right here, at the very beginning, add some colors, and next thing you know, you have a masterpiece on your plate. And it's exciting to eat. So. <laughs> then you can paint. Yep. Awesome. So any other questions? All right, so. I don't want to see the end result of all your aphrodisiac cooking, guys, but uh, <laughs> definitely lots of great things, lots of great options. Omar, I'll make sure you get this sheet from the Fit180 page. Um, and yeah, any other questions? Actually, the, would anyone like, would anyone like some vanilla chai? Some vanilla chai? Yeah. I'm not going to do tea this late. I got pomegranate right now because I'm keeping the, keeping the caffeine level down. Awesome. Thanks for being on, guys. Definitely. Uh, Look forward to seeing the results of your stuff, too. Happy Valentine's. Well, you don't want to see anyone. No, I don't want to see anyone's exact results. Food. You're right. Just, just the, the food. food. Just the food. Just the Hashtag disclaimer. Just the food. Just food. <laughs> no other